Now let's get right to our discussion. We want to talk about heroism. Now there's been a lot of talk about heroism after uh, Charles Ramsey uh, saved the three women that were held captive uh, by this hideous, hideous man, Ariel Castro. And of course, there was also a lot of talk about um, you know, whether or not you should be considered a hero if you come out uh, as a major athlete who's gay. Now let's watch a quick video that explains a little more about this. Let's turn to Jason Collins. Um, it, this is the uh, sports star that came out. Uh, you tweeted this, so Jason Collins is a hero because he's gay. Our standard for heroism has dropped quite a bit since Normandy. Why such a cheap shot against a guy who did a pretty brave thing. I don't think it's a cheap shot. I think that heroism is defined by willingness to sacrifice uh, in favor of, and take a real personal risk in favor of a, of a noble larger goal. This may be a noble larger goal, but I'm He's not the sure first, what the risk first is. first male American athlete in history to come out as gay while still playing. If you've been watching the news at all over the past 24 hours, you know that a star has been born. A man named Charles Ramsey from Cleveland. Last night he was very busy eating a Big Mac when he heard a woman screaming from inside his neighbor's house. He rushed over, he kicked the door in and freed her. It turned out she'd been missing for 10 years and there were two other women in the house who'd also been missing. It's a terrible story, but thanks in part to Charles Ramsey, everyone is now safe and out of the house and Charles is being hailed as a hero. <laughs> All right. It'd be a fascinating way to end the video. <laughs> I love it. Um, now, recently, Angelina Jolie also came to the public and said that she had a double mastectomy, and a lot of people were saying that she was heroic for talking about a very personal decision that she made for her health. Desi, I want to start off with you with this whole question of heroism. I mean, do you think that Angelina Jolie is a hero? And if so, or if not, I mean, how do you define heroism? Well, I think that's a great way to start, is how do you define it? I mean, I think generally we all have sort of a, an idea of what it means without actually stopping and thinking about it. And so you made me stop and think about it. It's like, oh, I think what it is is it's, you know, when you do something that is selfless, that helps someone else, does not help yourself in any fashion, it's also something that is at great personal risk to yourself. And I think the guy that was on the video where he called it, you know, it's in service of a noble, large goal, but somehow a lot of people seem to believe that heroism has to involve physical risk of your life. But I think with Jason Collins specifically coming out, as a professional gay male athlete, the first one. That was at great personal risk to his livelihood. And I think that life and livelihood are, you know, two things that can also be considered part of that definition. So I absolutely think Jason Collins is a hero. He's a hero to a lot of people for being the first one to do this. Angelina Jolie, not so much. I think mm. that she's a great role model. I think what she did was very courageous, but I wouldn't necessarily call it um, her being a hero for this because she's already uh, basically set for life and it's not necessarily going to be as much at great personal risk to her life or livelihood uh, you know, for her to have come out like this. It's great what she did, don't get me wrong. Right. But I don't know if it would fall under my definition of hero. See, and I like that you say my definition of hero because it really does differ from one person or another. In I the mean, eye of the beholder. It, it, really, that's the, that is the case. And like when I think of heroes, not to get too schmoopy here, like I think about my mom. You yeah. know, like that's my hero, exactly. right? But but to everyone else, they're like, that's just your mom. That doesn't mean anything, right? And when I think of heroes, I think of Spider-Man. So <laughs> everybody, but we should be clear, there's a difference between being bitten by a radioactive spider and then yeah. saving the world and then just regular people. What a, re what a real hero is, is someone who steps up to the moment. Right. So Charles Ramsey, he was, there were many people that probably had little indications of things. He stepped up to his moment. He now has his defining moment and saved these women's lives. Jason Collins, yes, maybe he's gonna retire, maybe he wasn't the greatest player, but he stepped up to his important moment and that's what a hero is in my view. Yeah, I mean, I think that the opposite of heroism is apathy, and you know, I, like I think that you know Angelina Jolie definitely needed to do what she did, but she could have just kept it private. You know, she easily could have uh, somehow. And I think that for her to sort of ignite the national conversation about the need of double, you know, voluntary double mastectomies with when you have this gene, uh, I think it's great. You know, I mean, so many people sit idly by and do nothing with their with their platforms. You know, especially in the world of celebrity. Or they and do something uh, extremely generic, like they'll find yeah. some charity that they can attach their name to. I mean, would you consider that heroic if it's like, oh, well, I got to do something philanthropic, so sure, uh, I want to fight for women who are victims of domestic yeah, abuse. Yeah, I mean, I think as long as it's an authentic effort, you know, mm -hmm. it can't just be lip service, mm -hmm. you know. 
Um, there was a, one of my favorite movies of the past year is, is The Dark Knight Rises. And at the end of The Dark Knight Rises, there's an amazing quote that Batman says about heroism. He said, a hero can be anybody, even somebody putting a coat, reassuring a young child that the world hasn't ended. I mean, it's really, it's all relative, you know? And, uh, and I think that the, this definitely goes for people with platforms. Yeah, know? it's not just about acts. It's not just about running into a burning building. It's about the moment. We all are gonna have some moment in your life where you can do, be better than yourself. And that is what a hero is. Would you consider uh, our soldiers heroes? Uh, I know that Chris Hayes made controversial statements when he said, you know, well, you can't really, they're not really considered heroes. And of course he had to backpedal from that a little bit because he got a lot of hate. So I know I'm putting you guys in the hot seat right now by asking you this very difficult question, but Dave Rubin, I want to start off with you. Do you think that if you join the military, that automatically makes you a hero? Can I wait till they give their answers <laughs> and then I'll just parse between them? Um, I would say, yes, they're heroes in that they are doing something benevolent to protect our freedoms. And it's not worth getting into all the politics of whether we invade countries we should. They don't make all those decisions. They are trying to do something good, something that does and pay a lot that they're not going to get a lot of benefits from in the rest of their lives and I think in that regard they they are heroes. Desi, can you have a checkered past and still be a hero? Now, in the specific case of Charles Ramsey, um, people started looking into his past and they were like, mm, turns out he was a bit of a criminal and they're trying to belittle what he had done. And do you think that that takes away from his good act? Uh, I think absolutely you can be a hero with a checkered past and absolutely it takes away from what he did for people to I think the media looking for something else to just keep the story going are digging into somebody's past and they're not doing it because he did such a great thing they're doing it because they just need to fill some time yeah. mm -hmm. um, I think what Charles Ramsey did was heroic because many people in an urban area many people would just you know be apathetic or would not try to get in or get involved remember there was a huge uh, terrible uh, episode that happened in New York in the 70s where a woman who was being raped and murdered in an, uh, in her neighborhood and she called called out for help you know, over a period of like a half hour and nobody came out to help her. Mm -hmm. So that would be the opposite of heroism. So what he did by stepping up and getting those women out when he didn't have to, I think absolutely means that he can be a hero in that situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. totally. So uh, Max, is there a specific case where you felt that you, know, you could really rise to the occasion and be a hero? Me? Uh, yeah, on, I mean, uh, what do you got? <laughs> well, I think every, day to day, every day is sort of a hero's journey, you know, on the individual scale for each of us. So I think that it's like, you know, whether it's donating to a, a Kickstarter campaign here and there that you find to be really sort of um, meaningful or, you know, voting with your, with your wallet at the supermarket and going with, you know, a meat product that's from an organic, natural, small farm as opposed to like Monsanto. I think that that's, you know, a micro act of heroism that should be respected, you know? Yeah, I love the de different definitions of hero. I'll give you guys a specific example of where I felt that I was a hero. Um, because I know that, you know, tooting my own horn is something the audience <laughs> loves. That's very uh, heroic, by <laughs> the way. Yes, yes. I remember when we were in Vegas once, uh, the line for the buffet was insanely long, and this huge group of people just cut everyone, and I lost it, and I really spoke up, and uh, someone who worked at the buffet told them, no, back of the line. Ooh. And you know what? I think that that was pretty damn heroic. Wow. <laughs> yeah, especially in Vegas. <laughs> exactly right. You're hungry. You're hungover. Yeah. I'm obviously joking around. Um, but it is totally <laughs> true. I mean, there are so many little acts that people can do that really have such a huge influence on people. And, and I love that. I love that, you know, they do get credit for what they do, especially in the case of Charles Ramsey. You guys are absolutely right. There were so many cases in that particular story where people suspected something, but they didn't really investigate it. And, you know, he put himself in a situation that could have been risky. I mean, I remember he said, you know, you know there's something wrong when a pretty little white girl, you know, is, is trying to run into the arms of a black man, right? So he, it seemed like he had his hesitation in the beginning, but he did something that he felt was right, and it saved three lives. And wasn't the beauty of him, like, there was such honesty in him? Like, the way he did those interviews, there yeah. was nothing pretentious or about me. He was so right. matter-of-fact. I was having my McDonald's, yeah. and I just did this thing that anyone would do, and that's what a hero is. Yes, definitely. So, um, it is... Being a hero is something that people are born with, or would you say that it's something that is learned? There's this whole nature versus nurture argument when it comes to heroism. Max, let me start off with you. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think moment to moment people have the opportunity to make heroic choices, and I don't, I don't think you have to be born with it. I think it's just, you know, I think it's kind of in our DNA, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to do the right thing. I don't think you need any sort of 
you know, outside influence. Interesting. Desi? Well, I think one of the things that, uh, that you do find is that when we have the, uh, the society that we have, the culture that we have, you know, we, we talk to kids from a very young age, you know, they've got Sesame Street, they have comic book characters, they have superheroes. We're constantly presenting to them in our societal mythology, if you want to call it that. Hey, you know, these are the ways that, that you get along great. These are sort of our culture. You know, you try to help other people. You try to be selfless and unselfish when you can. So I don't know that it's innate. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, we do sort of train each other and talk to each other about these things. And they see that, you know, good things happen when you help people. So that's yeah. the training from childhood. But also there is some, when, you, when, you're, when you're going through, say, military, uh, training that they do say you never know how you're going to react when the moment uh, you are required to step up when that happens and that's why they train them so hard so that they can behave instinctively and not have to stop and think about it so it's you know we don't really know how any one of us would react when presented with that situation and we can you know pretty much hope that we will behave in a way that we'll be glad we did later yeah I I, well, I was going to say, you know, there's that sort of biblical quote of do unto others, and I'm not religious at all, but I think that there's a scientific uh, basis for that. We all have mirror neurons, and I think that that provides us sort of a, you know, a scientific basis for empathy, you know, and people, you know, I think like they've, they've shown that psychopaths, like the person that kidnapped these three girls, mm -hmm. you know, they have, chances are he's super low on the empathetic scale, you know, he has like faulty mirror neurons or something like that. I think we, I think we're hardwired to, to treat people properly and I think you know where there's faults in that you know wiring that's when we have monsters like the guy in Cleveland. Well later on in the show we're going to talk about Elizabeth Warren uh, proposing her first Senate bill and uh, in that Senate bill she's going to uh, attempt to lower the interest rate for federal student loans and and the reason why I'm bringing that up in this segment is because Elizabeth Warren is an example of a hero to me because she's actually using her position as a politician to help the public right so um, you know in, in mentioning who my hero is I was hoping that maybe you guys can share who you consider to be your hero. Well, it's interesting, you know, mm -hmm. I was thinking about that when you, you know, about that idea. And, you know, there's a difference between role models. I think there's like a spectrum. There's role models all the way up to heroes. Mm -hmm. So like you, my mom is my hero because uh -huh. she went through great personal sacrifice mm -hmm. to uh, be who she is today and where she is today. And that was uh, through a lot of difficult circumstances. So because of that, because of my personal connection to her and knowing those circumstances, uh, that's why she's my hero. And, and more so when I look at people in the culture, uh, people in politics or people who are heroes outside of myself it's more about look at that action that they took that great personal risk to themselves that that is a, a different kind of heroism all right Dave Rubin well my mom of course yes. ha have to say mom yeah all mothers <laughs> everywhere Desi's mom no. your mom um, but in in another way I would say Ellen DeGeneres because oh, after nice. she oh, yeah. came out and she did her first stand-up special as an out person, and we had known her one way for 20 years, it, it was so eye-opening, and that I saw this other person that I identified with because of comedy, who uh, was stepping up and doing something that I felt like I should have been doing for so long, and that special just opened my world, and yeah, it was pretty heroic. That's a great answer. Yeah. Max? Well, God, I, my, my parents, my mom, and my mom, you know, is definitely an amazing woman, uh, and you know, I don't know, they, they were just awesome parents, and I know it's difficult, uh, to be a good parent and to uh, provide, you know, for your kids, especially like my parents, their marriage wasn't, you know, that great, but they stayed together and they, they raised me and my two brothers really well, so I don't know. All right, fair yeah. enough. Everyone loves their parents. That's a good thing. We got, we got a solid <laughs> panel, loving days, people. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mom.